Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be investigating radiator fan configuration. We're using a Corsair H100i GTX. It's not a graphics card, don't know why it has GTX in it, but anyways. And some Noctua NFF12s in a bunch of different configurations. So check out the straw poll, link down below. Vote on which configuration you think is going to win, and let's do this. Corsair claims unrivaled comfort and universal compatibility on its new Void Surround headset featuring genuine Dolby 7.1 headphone USB adapter. Click the link in the video description to learn more. Our first test, we're gonna have our NFF12s pushing air up through the radiator, just two fans, nothing super crazy with push-pull configurations or whatever, super simple test. Also in AI suite in the motherboard, we have them pinned at 60%. With all of these tests, people go like, oh, well, maybe the fan speed was changing, which is why the thermal paste application didn't change. No, the fan speed is static in all of these tests. It's not changing. If it changes, it might change by like 10 RPM, which just doesn't at all matter. So, to IDA64 we go. Let's test out our first configuration. So with the two Noctua NFF12s pushing up through the radiator at an ambient room temperature of 18.1 degrees, the core ran at 38 degrees. This is all done in Celsius. We've got our good kind of starting number. Let's move on forward. So now the fans are configured to pull air down through the radiator and into the case. So currently the airflow is sucking in that way. So running IDA64 again, start test, and we'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay, so with the Noctua's pulling down through the rad, we had a room ambient temperature of 18.3, and yet again, a core temperature of 38. So that really didn't make any difference, having them push up or pull down. So moving on, we're gonna start doing two sets of fans. So this, would increase your cost by a fair amount because a lot of coolers, including this one, will come with two fans, but not four. So if you want to move up to four, your costs are going to go up a whole bunch. So for this to be worth it, we need the cooling to have a significant improvement. Just something to keep in mind. All right, so now I have two sets of fans, both pulling down into the case. So one set pushing down through the radiator, another set pulling down through the radiator. We're gonna check in 10 minutes, and there we go. See you later. That equaled an ambient temperature of 18.5 degrees and an actual readout from the computer temperature for the core of 35 degrees. So we saw an improvement of three degrees, but you did add two NFF12 fans, which is like, a fair amount of cost, so just keep that in mind. Next up, we're gonna do a pretty stupid configuration. We're gonna have the fans on top, trying to pull up through the radiator, and we're gonna have the fans on the bottom trying to push down through the radiator. So opposite directions, super weird. Just gonna see what, what it does, I guess. Workshop, yeah! Okay, so short answer, don't do that. Long answer, the ambient in the room was 18.7 degrees and the temperature of the core was 48 degrees. So not great. It increased by like 10 degrees Celsius, which is bad. So yeah, don't have it so that the air is being pushed at like itself, because that's just a terrible idea and makes no sense. Next up, what we're gonna do is have it all of the air going up with two layers of fans. So we're gonna have the bottom fans pushing air up through the rad and the top fans pushing pulling air up through the rad. So let's try that one. So fairly unsurprisingly, with an ambient of 18.7 degrees and a core temperature of 35 degrees, it's exactly the same as having the fans point the other direction. So right now, we have the fans pulling up through the rad for the ones that are on the top, and we have the fans pushing up through the rad for the ones that are on the bottom. Now we're gonna try single layer again, but on the top, which includes one of my favorite configurations, but we'll do that one last. So with the fans on top pushing down through the rad, we got Got a temperature through the computer of 39 degrees and an ambient of 18.8, which is about one degree higher than when we started with the fans on the bottom in the same type of configuration, um, but also about one degree higher ambient. So more or less the exact same result. 
Okay, and as I expected last and definitely not least, pulling up through the rad. This is my favorite configuration and our favorite configuration here at Linus Tech Tips because of the dust management properties where it will put the dust on the bottom of the radiator where it's very easy to take away instead of sandwiching it somewhere and making it very annoying because you have to go through the fans and all that crap. It, at an ambient of 18.9, which I would like to point out is almost one full degree higher than when we started, reached about 39 degrees on the core, which is exactly one degree higher than the ones we were running when it started. So it performs just as well as having the fans below the rad and is better for dust management. A win in my opinion. So as it seems to be with the workshop, <laughs> The conclusion is it doesn't really matter that much in terms of actual cooling, unless you do something stupid like make them face each other and conflicting airflow paths and all that kind of stuff. Adding another set of fans can improve your cooling, but not by a huge amount and probably not by an amount, in my opinion, that I would bother getting two more fans for your rad and adding that much thickness into the top of your case and having to deal with them and all that kind of crap. And last but not least, I would like to reaffirm that in my opinion, the best way to put the fans is pulling up through the rad with the fans on the top so that the dust will get caked onto the very bottom of the rad instead of having it go in some other direction where the dust is going to get onto the fans themselves and onto the rad under where the fans are, which is an extremely annoying place to clean it off of. Crunchyroll is a site created by anime fans for anime fans. They offer the most current episodes of new shows straight from Japan, like Digimon Adventure Try and Active Raid. They also have a large collection of the most popular anime series, like Mobile Suit, Gundam, Iron-Blooded Orphans, and The Asterisk War. And all of their content on their site is professionally subtitled. Head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus and you can sign up for a 30-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium. The completely ad-free experience is able to be enjoyed with the benefits of premium streaming like 1080p, getting new episodes straight from Japan within an hour of their premiere, and being able to stream anywhere from any device at any time, including stuff like your phone, your tablet, your game console, your PC, whatever you want. You can continue your premium membership to Crunchyroll for only $6.95 per month. So again, head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus and check them out. Thank you guys for watching the workshop. Let me know other suggestions for things you'd like me to check out in the comments down below. Again, this doesn't have to be something that you don't know the answer to. If you just want a video to point at, so when someone asks you a question, you can be like, this also look, um, yeah, you can suggest that. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video if you liked it, dislike the video if you disliked it. Check out our other channels. We have a channel, super fun channel. We have a tech quickie channel. They're both absolutely fantastic, just wonderful. Wonderful content creation over there, just great. Amazon affiliate codes, that helps us out a ton. Becoming a forum contributor, that helps us out a ton too. And you can buy some pretty cool t-shirts down below. Click up here for our previous workshop video.